Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, says the city has now been reduced to ashes. Joining me now is Michael Bostick, senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and former spokesman for the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Michael, great to see you in person. Okay. We see these images from Mariupol. We hear the stories coming out of that city, and you just get a sense of the immense suffering, purposeful, at the hands of Vladimir Putin. Purposeful and grave violation of international humanitarian law, uh, denying people access to water, uh, access to their agriculture, things like that. I think uh, what the Ukrainians are doing, actually, given all the destruction right now and human suffering is actually very wise, what they're doing is they're documenting a lot of the war crimes, alleged war crimes that are happening. And this will be very, very important later on because Ukraine actually has a very experienced team mm -hmm. of uh, people who are experts in doing these kind of legal trials, international legal trials, and they'll put, come in very useful a few weeks or months down the road to uh, press this case against the Russians. You have a fear that the deliberate suffering being inflicted in Mariupol might be repeated in other parts of the country. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I spent a lot of time in the Donbass behind the front line there, and we saw with our own eyes uh, the Russian-backed thugs and what they're capable of doing. And I think this, what we're going to see, sadly, is the Russian playbook being played out again and again and again until they're stopped. And that is a lot of the use of these unguided uh, weapons to pound uh, these communities into, into submission. Uh, but I think the West still has an opportunity now to intervene before we see a more massive mm -hmm. slaughter of people. And, uh, for example, we had a panel yesterday with the Atlanta Council, and it was discussed, you know, if you, you can have a no-fly zone with actually, without actually planes coming over Ukraine. You can do it through technological means. So I think every possible action needs to be explored now. Better to deal with Mr. Putin now mm -hmm. on the West terms than on his own terms later on. Joe Biden, the president of the United States, coming to Europe for a meeting yeah. this Thursday. What do you want to see come from that? Well, look, he's promised a lot of weaponry, uh, a lot of funding. Uh, I think Ukrainians I've spoken to, I watch a lot of Ukrainian television speak to Ukrainians, they're very heartened to see already money being mm -hmm. committed to the reconstruction because the costs are going to be huge. But I think Mr. Biden needs to show that the West actually has a spine. And, you know, stop being afraid, I think, of Mr. Putin resorting to, God forbid, nuclear weapons or chemical weapons because uh, I, I think that's held back the West. Now it's time to grow that spine and say, we're going to do this. And I think what the Ukrainians really need right now is that air superiority, because as I said, the Russians will turn more and more to much more destructive means, long, way, long range weaponry that could even easily hit uh, a city like this. Just a few miles from yep. here, the missiles fell. Michael Bostu, great to see you in person. My Thanks pleasure. so much for joining us.